everybody! In today's tutorial I am going to show you how to make a dust cover for your Cricut Maker. Hi, I'm Ali and welcome to my little corner here on YouTube where we are going to make beautiful things together. Today I am going to show you how to make a dust cover for your Cricut Maker. This is a free pattern that you can find in Design Space. You can download it directly from there. You can download the PDF instructions, but you cannot download the pattern. The pattern itself stays in Design Space, and when you're cutting the pieces for your pattern, you have to cut them using your Cricut Maker. This is definitely a beginner's project. So if you are new at sewing and you want to try learning how to sew some curves and how to do some the casing for the elastic, this is definitely a great project for you. It's very easy to follow. Now I did have a little bit of problem when I was cutting the pieces of fabric the machine wasn't cutting it in the order like pieces one through seven or one through six is six pieces so it got a little bit confusing for me and I will share with you a real quick um, clip of what happened when I was cutting the fabric now in this video I am not going to show you how to cut the fabric I'm just going to show you the instructions on how to make the dust cover after you cut the fabric. There is one piece that you have to cut manually. So for that piece I used my rotary cutter, I used my quilting ruler and my cutting mat and it's just one big square. The rest is cut using the Cricut Maker. You will need some elastic and you will also need a marking pen to use in your machine when you're marking the fabric. I didn't have a marking pen so I used a regular marker that I used for my Cricut before and it worked fine. It didn't bleed through my fabric. So that worked out for me. You can try that or you can just buy in the Cricut fabric pen or an adapter to put in your machine uh, and put a fabric pen in there. Now, it will not work if you don't have a pen. So you have to have a pen in order for the machine to cut the fabric. So that's important to know. Instruction says to use quilting cotton for everything, but I used uh, quilting cotton. The main color is waterproof canvas and the reason why I used waterproof canvas is because I made another cover for my embroidery machine and I used waterproof canvas for that so I wanted them to match. This pattern does not tell you to interface your quilting cotton. You can make it without interfacing the fabric but I suggest you interface it it may make it a little bit easier to work. Especially if you're new at sewing and you're still learning how to handle the fabric. The inside is all one solid piece and this is the piece that you will cut manually and not using the Cricut Maker. If you want to make this differently, say you don't like the accent piece in the center, you can just cut a one, one of the pieces for like the lining and two of the side pieces and you can make it that way too. So there are ways that you can modify this pattern to make it more uh, you, you know, to fit your aesthetics a little bit better. If you don't like the center piece, the, the center accent piece. You can also make it without the pockets. Uh, it really is up to you. Now, when you're cutting the fabric, because it's uh, you're using the Cricut Maker to cut the fabric, you cannot tell the machine, hey, don't cut 
piece four and five, but only cut one and two, etc. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to cut the pieces using freezer paper. That way I can just have them already cut. And if I decide to make another cover in the future, all I have to do is trace my pattern that I already have from the freezer paper on top of my fabric and cut it that way. If I decide to do that, I will let you know. I will create like a short video or one a video on my TikTok. And here's the handle for all my social medias so you can go check it out there as well. But for now, I did it the way the instructions said. Other than that, if you decide to make this project, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question about it that maybe I didn't cover something or you have a, a question, specific question on how to maybe modify the pattern a little bit, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And if you like my videos and you're liking what you're learning, please hit the like button. It helps me more than you know. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already and hit the bell button so that you can get notifications when I upload the next video. Okay, you guys, I think that's all for now. Enjoy your tutorial. So when you decide to cut your materials for the dust cover, the dark blue patterns are your accent pieces. The gray are your lining pieces. And the light blue will be your, kind of like the main pieces. So in my case, the light blue will be the lilac. The dark blue will be the stained glass looking fabric. And of course the lining is a collage of fabrics that I pretty much put together for the lining. And it's only lining for the pocket. So this is the out, this is the side, one side, I don't know. And then here's the other side and the pockets, the linings. Um, and it's definitely not cutting it in order, but I don't want to stop. So I'm just going to continue. I just want to let you know that's what I figure out so far. So here are the parts that we're going to need. They're numbered, so that's a good thing that the Cricut places a number on each one of the pieces. So we're, this is one, this is two, and three, okay? The instruction says to assemble the top of the dust cover by aligning the tabs on pieces one, two, and three, okay? And so um, this tab looks the biggest, and this one looks the biggest as well. So right sides together, of course. It doesn't say that in here, but um, you're going to place them right sides together. So you're going to align one side and uh, I'm going to place clips here to keep it together. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with the other side, but on the other side of the exterior here. And I made the mistake when I was cutting this, um, when I took it out of the mat, it had a little pointy marking here and I cut it by mistake. So I know that this goes this way because I have these other two pointy markings that match the ones on the other side of the uh, um, the exterior panel.
At the beginning of the pattern, it says to use a quarter inch seam allowance for this project. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine now and stitch it at a quarter inch seam allowance on each side so that it looks like this, okay? Next the instruction says to work on the pockets and those are the pieces number six. So you have four of those. You have two linings and two exterior pieces. The pattern says to sew the pocket pieces right sides together. And since this lining fabric that I'm using looks the same on both sides, the way I know this is the wrong side is because that's where the markings are and we're going to align them to sew them at a quarter of an inch seam allowance on one side. Sew the seam on the top part and not where the markings are. You see those markings? Those markings are the bottom of your pocket. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it at one quarter of an inch seam allowance on the top part of the pockets. Next, you're going to open your pocket pieces like this, okay? You're going to take your um, elastic and you're just going to choose one side. I am choosing the side with the exterior, the waterproof canvas, because it's, it's a little more sturdy than the lining side. This is not interfaced or anything, so I feel like it's better here. So what they say is to place it right there at the edge and take it to the sewing machine and tack it down. So just stitch over it back and forth right there to keep it in place, okay? Right there, back and forth. So I'm just going to fold it down, matching here the bottom part of the pockets. So go ahead and fold it down, make sure it looks even on the top, and stitch it at half an inch down from the fold, and do the same with the other pocket. Now we're going to use a pin, a safety pin, and we're going to run the elastic through the casing, and then we're gonna tack it on the next side. So it doesn't look perfect, doesn't look beautiful. And the reason is because the waterproof canvas is a very stiff fabric. So it kind, you know, it's a little bit difficult to work 
The only reason why I'm using it is because I want it to match the cover that I made for my sewing machine. But if you use regular quilting cotton fabric, like is suggested in the pattern, this should be a lot faster and a lot easier to, um, to complete this step. So I'm going, just going to finish it and then I'm going to um, take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to uh, tack it there again, you know, run it um, in place. I do have a little bit of elastic here, not a lot, but I don't want to <laughs> let go of it. I don't want to open the, the safety pin and let go of it until I have it in the sewing machine just in case I lose the elastic and then I can, I'll remove the safety pin, okay? The next step is to take the markings right here at the bottom of the pocket and those are the pleats. So what I'm going to do is pretty much take this bottom piece is 12 inches. You're gonna take it down to seven inches, which is the distance here at the bottom uh, side of the side pocket. So I'm going to take the markings right here where you see the markings and I'm just going to join the side marking towards the center. And keeping it together. And then do the same with the other marking towards the center. And you kind of make like a gusset right there. And if it's not seven inches, you can um, move this in like this a little more until it gets to the seven inches. Perfect. This is seven inches and it's crooked. <laughs> Okay, you want it to be at least even, right? It's like in the center. Okay, and I'm going to baste it there and I have the other one I've already made. You can just go straight, one eighth of an inch, four millimeter stitch length. It's just to keep it in place. Now we're going to take one of the exterior sides and we're going to match those little pointy things markings to the side of it and we're going to put a pin well, more than one pin <laughs> put as many pins as you need right always like that and take it to the sewing machine and stitch it all around it making sure that you catch the ends of the elastic okay right here do the same with the other one after you finish your side pockets right we are going to make now the lining piece. For that, we take the one piece of fabric that was not cut using the Cricut. It was one piece that was 21 and a half inches by 17 and a half that you had to hand cut. And we are this is the lining piece, okay? So we're going to take pieces four and five, the side panels for the lining. And as you know, at the beginning of the video, I explained how I was having issues cutting the fabric. So unfortunately, I ran out of this fabric, so I had to cut the, uh, another piece with another color. So the inside is gonna look different for me, but ideally all these are the same colors, right? Okay, so we're going to join the side, the sides 
of the dust cover to this main piece. And the way we do that is with the right side facing down. So if you have a piece of fabric that you can clearly see the right side to the wrong side, your right side will be facing down. And this is my wrong side because it has the number, okay? And you can see the number there. So let's go ahead and take the right sides together and match them. Um, we're going to match the short end of this piece. So the 17 and a half inch long side, you're going to pick it up and you're going to take the wrong side um, facing you, the right side together. You're going to match the edge of the 17 and a half inch long side you're going to match it along the edge curve of the side panel here. So we're going to start with one of one corner. Okay, you're going to start with that corner and we're going to match it like this. So I, I put a pin on that first and then I take my other corner and I do the same thing. Remember, right sides together, and I join in like that. So as you can see, here's my main lining panel, and this is my side panel, right sides together, okay? And they're like this, okay? Now, I'm going to go around and pin it. This part doesn't have a marking, but it's okay. You can just keep pinning it and you can do one side and this and next the, and then the other. So you can do both the two sides that are straight, right? Straight lines. And then you can do the curved side. Okay, so you see how it looks just like that. Now we're going to do it, do the same on the other side. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now let's take it to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance, three millimeter stitch length all around the curves here, beginning and starting on these two edges. I like to start with a flat side against the flat side of the sewing machine, against the needle plate. That way it's just easier. I don't have to worry about any wrinkles or anything. I can control the fabric better. So the flat side against the bed here of the sewing machine. And I always uh, back stitch to secure the stitching. So one, two, three, back stitch, one, two, three, and then keep going. And take it slow here, you don't rush. One thing that you can do in the middle of the process here, cut here some of the uh, fabric and snip it right at the corners uh, around the, the, the curves. 
that way it helps it uh it, it's easier to sew because the, the it opens up the fabric and it's easier to handle When we get to the end, remember, right when you get to the very edge, back stitch three times and forward stitch again to secure your stitching. So we're right at the end. I back stitch at least twice and then fo forward and that's it. What I would do is I will just snip a little bit here, the corners, the curve area. Make You can either snip it like that or make, some people do like little Vs and open it so it opens like that. But that helps the fabric open up and releases some of the tension in the thread so when you turn it inside out it's um it fits perfect okay we're gonna do the same on this side now we are going to do the same with the exterior i already did one side so we're going to do the other side together so this is my shorter size, the, 30, the 17 and a half, and it has the two markings. So this side is a little bit easier because you also have the markings here on the side pocket. So what you're going to do, the right side facing down, okay? And this right side's facing down, you're going to match those two but look what I almost made the mistake. I almost matched them this way and no, it needs to match this way. So remember, this is your long side, your 17 and a half inch. Your curved edge is, uh, is going to align there to that center, okay? And these sides, these pointy markings are going to match with these other pointy markings. So we start with this corner. So here I am wrong side, wrong side. My curve is facing that way. And now I'm going to move it and match the corners here. Okay. So I am going to ma make sure my straight line is done first. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other side. This section is going to be a little bit bulkier because you have the elastic and then you have pretty much four layers of fabric, right? The exterior, two pieces for the pocket, and the side panel. But it should 
go through your sewing machine with no problem because there's no lining, interfacing, foam, anything bulky. So shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem going through these uh, thicker sides, but still take it slow when you take it through your sewing machine. Okay. Now, same thing. Let's take it to the sewing machine and stitch it at a quarter inch seam allowance all around uh, the sides here and around the curves. So now we have our exterior piece. It looks perfect. It looks really good. At this point, if you want, you can trim some of these bulky uh, edges where the elastic is. I like to trim as much as possible any bulkiness. Um, make sure that you don't cut the stitching line, right? Make sure that your stitching line is intact. And you can do that on the other side as well. This step is optional. But it's, I don't know, I feel that it's always good to, to do. Now, what you're going to do is that you're going to turn your exterior right side out. At this point, there are two ways you can finish this uh, dust cover. You can join the exterior and the lining with the wrong sides together, like this. Okay, you can put the lining inside your exterior, like that, right, wrong sides together. So the right side, you can see the right side and you can see the right side on the, in the lining and bind it all around. But if you don't wanna do binding, which I don't wanna do binding, the way you're going to do this is right sides out, sticking out, right? Then you're going to take your lining piece and you're going to insert both the right sides together, but the exterior is gonna be inside the lining, okay? So still right sides together, but instead of the lining going inside the exterior, the exterior is gonna go inside the lining. And just make sure that you match your seams right here. This is important. This is gonna make it look nice and professional, okay? That your seams here are, they match. And you're gonna do that for all four uh, of these seams, which is on the side pocket and the side of the dust cover. that it goes like that now go ahead and pin all around the edges the bottom edges just pin it in place Pick one side, whichever side you want, but pick one side where you're going to leave an opening. Okay, so I'm going to let, this is gonna be my side that I leave the opening and I'm gonna leave the opening here on my uh, accent fabric. So I'm just going to put a clip here and another one here. And that is going to be my beginning and my end. Right there, my beginning and my end. And on this side, 
I'll make sure that I put pins right there along my accent fabric. This is what's going to let me know that I am going to stitch along this side, but on this side, I'm going to start and stop here. Now, let's take it to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch it at a quarter inch seam allowance, three millimeter stitch length. We're gonna stitch all the way around. We're going to stop and start at on this side. And remember to back stitch when you start and when you stop. And we're going to leave this side open. Now we're going to turn this inside out. So we're going to birth this. Uh, turn it inside out like that to the opening. Okay. Pretty easy. Okay, perfect. Now, so as you can see, here's my lining and here's my exterior. I'm gonna put my hand through the hole here and I'm just going to kind of push the corners a little bit. And I'm going to do the same here now uh, with the lining. Now, we are going to give this a good press before we close it. I, you see, this is my seam. This is where I joined the two pieces of fabric. And I am going to kind of uh, press them, finger press them like that to mark the seam. We're going to top stitch this in just a moment. But, before we do that, I like to press it. I mean, I like to kind of join it together, press it, and keep it together like this with a couple of pins, okay? So we're gonna go around doing that. Let's give this a nice press. Okay. Um, just make sure that you give it a press. And if you put any clips or any pins, anything like that, that, that you remove them so that they, can't, they don't get melted, but that you put them back, okay? And here, the opening side, you need to press both the exterior and the lining fabrics. So fold it in. It should automatically give you the kind of like the quarter inch 
uh, marking because of the seam that you stitched together. So if you press it like that, it will, uh, it will help you. When you run it through the sewing machine, it will stay in place. Just like that. When we top stitch it, we're gonna top stitch it at a quarter, uh, one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I am still going to do three millimeter stitch length, especially because I have this opening area here and uh, because, but once you start going around outside of the opening, you can increase it to four millimeter stitch length um, for the top stitching. And the bulk, this, um, the side pockets area right here could be a little bulky. So just make sure that you go slowly because you have the pleats Make sure you just go slowly around it. Um, but the top stitching is important because it's going to give it uh, a little bit of a structure and, and shape to the dust cover. really really well um, the pockets are actually very deep and so um, here's the charger for the machine I'm just gonna put it in one of the pockets here and of course you can put other things in the pockets like scissors and the weeder tools and all the other tools that you want. I think this is really, really nice. It turned out really good, really pretty. And it matches the cover that I made for my embroidery machine. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was really easy, a fun little project. It didn't really take that long. And there are so many options, so many ways that you can make it your own. And don't forget to check the rest of my videos. Ciao!